one of the most important things that I teach people is this concept called the six phase meditation. Six phase meditation is a way of training your brain to perform at its best. There are six things that you need to elevate in life for you to have the most amazing day. She's a Romanian girl. She learned this practice when she was 16 years old. And her dream was to beat Serena Williams and win the US Open. She started doing this practice and at the age of 19, she beat Serena Williams and won the US Open Tennis Championship. When they asked her how she did it, she mentioned this practice. She is one of the students of this practice. If you know this simple mental trick that I teach athletes and I teach rock stars, you instantly go back up and you perform at your best. If a 16-year-old girl can use this, imagine what this can do for grades, imagine what this can do for your dating life, imagine what this can do for sports, imagine what this can do for your health, Hey, nice to see all of you guys here. Hey, good to see you again. That's Bob Marley's grandson. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> so what we're going to talk about today is, um, is something that I got really fascinated with when I was 14 years old. How many of you here were once 14 years old? Great. Then this will probably relate to you as well. So I turn this idea into a book. It's called The Six Phase Meditation. The book is coming out in September in, in the United States, but we, I mean, this is not about the book. What I want to teach you is an idea from this book. I started playing with this idea when I was 14 years old, and it completely changed my life, and I want to teach this concept to you. But first, let me tell you what this thing does. So when you go to school, you learn a lot of useful stuff. You also, let's be honest, learn a lot of stuff that is not useful. We learn history, we learn geography, and that stuff is okay, but in today's world, most of it you can get on YouTube. Some of the really important things that we need, how to be an entrepreneur, how to always have your mind in the right state, how to talk to a girl or guy you like, how to pull yourself out of a funk or a depression. School doesn't teach that very well. And so this is what we try to fix with Mind Valley. We try to teach the things that school does not teach. So I grew up in not a rich country. I grew up in Malaysia. My mother was a government school teacher. My father worked for a company. And my father never, never got a chance to go to university. And when I was 14 years old, my father would give me books to read. Not books on traditional learning, but books on motivation, books on meditation, books on the human mind. And I grew really interested in these books. I started meditating at the age of 14. And I found that what I was discovering from these books that schools didn't talk about was actually giving me so much more than anything my school gave me. And so this is why as I continued down this path, I ended up using a lot of these skills to build a company, Mind Valley, because I wanted to share this knowledge with more people. Now, during that time, I worked with close to 1,000 experts. I interviewed them. I got on stage with them. 1,000 experts. Some of these experts are famous people that you know, like Richard Branson. Some are philosophers. Some are writers. And as I worked with them, I tried to take all of the ideas and put the ideas together into something that we can bring into our lives. And one of the most important things that I teach people is this concept called the six phase meditation. And this is what I'd like to teach you guys now, if you guys think you would find it useful, would you? Great, none of that like weird hand thing that Ronan showed. So first let me show you what this does, okay? So the six phase meditation is a way of training your brain to perform at its best, to put you in the right state of mind, whether it's studying or it's talking to someone that you're shy about or it's, it's, it's achieving your goals. Now, how many of you here play sports? Awesome. How many of you here are musicians? That means you play a musical instrument. Great. So I have two Estonian children. My, my son is really into uh, music. He plays the electric guitar. He plays the saxophone. My daughter plays the violin. We come from a very like musically um, attuned Estonian family. So it's great to see people here who are into sports and music. Raise your hand again, like really high, if you're into sports or music or both. Just raise your hand, I just wanna get, okay, great. So it's 
about 60% of the room, okay? Now, let me show you what this does to people who are for sports and music. This is Miguel. Maybe you guys have heard of some of his music. He created songs like Remember to Forget. He uh, wrote the music for the Pixar movie Coco. Miguel, before he goes on stage at a concert, he does this practice. He learned it from me. This is um, another famous person, a Swedish actress. She used this practice to heal her skin. She had very bad skin. She used it to heal her skin. She became Miss Sweden. This is Tony Gonzalez, one of America's top 100 football players. He used this practice. I trained him on this, and he's spoken about this in the newspapers. But the craziest story is this girl. She's a Romanian girl. She learned this practice when she was 16 years old, and her dream was to beat Serena Williams and win the U.S. Open. She started doing this practice, and at the age of 19, she beat Serena Williams and won the U.S. Open tennis championship. When they asked her how she did it, she mentioned this practice. She is one of the students of this practice. And this practice, of course, is called the six-phase meditation. And this is what I'm going to attempt to teach you. Now, we don't have much time to go really deep. For example, Bianca Andrescu, you can see she tweeted about it. She attended a six-hour training on this practice. We have 50 minutes. So I'm going to go fast. We won't be able to cover everything. But if you guys want to go deeper, my team will make a, a training app available for you on your Android or your iPhone. Is that okay? But all I want to do here is just give you an idea. If a 16-year-old girl can use this, go into this meditative state, see herself winning the U.S. Open, and then win the U.S. Open at 19, imagine what this can do for grades. Imagine what this can do for your dating life. Imagine what this can do for sports. Imagine what this can do for your health. So... Here's what the practice looks like. But first, let me tell you where the idea came from. And I want to give you this example so you understand it. Anyone here play computer games? Okay, raise your hand high. N nothing to be ashamed of. I love computer games. So when I was young, when I was 12 years old, that was what computer games looked like. They basically sucked. It was only one color. It was a flat screen. And in this game called Rings of Zilfin, I was this tiny character called Reese, and I had to navigate this world, and you have to kill these giant spiders, shoot these like evil birds which are trying to kill you, and you had to improve your shooting accuracy, your strength, your endurance, your power, your charisma. Eventually, you get everything high enough, and you have enough power to go up to the evil Lord Zalgot, cut off his head, and free the land. Now, the game was really, really, really awfully dumb. But there was not much options back then. I lived in a country where there was no internet, there was no cable television, there were three channels. I still had to play the game because there was nothing else to do. But the game got so boring, I decided to just hack it. I decided to just go into the, the floppy drives. Back then, it was so much easier to hack a computer and just give my character Reese unlimited strength, like unlimited charisma, unlimited endurance, unlimited power, and just march up to Lord Zalgot and just cut off his head and end the game. And it was so refreshing. Then I celebrated with a chocolate milkshake and called it a day. <laughs> the funny thing is, our actual life is like that as well. There are six things that you need to elevate in life for you to have the most amazing day, for you to cut off the head of your Lord Zalgot. Now, obviously, what I'm talking about over here is there are six things that you need to generate within yourself so that you can be the hero of the game that you are playing. And that game is cool. That game is being a good kid. That game is achieving your goals. That game is, is getting good, better at your sport you play or the musical instrument you play, getting, becoming a better friend. It's these six things. But as we go through life, these things, they collapse. Your teacher might say something unkind to you. Your mom or dad might yell at you. A person you like might reject you. You might fall, scrape your knee. Your bicycle might stop working and you don't have money to get it fixed. As we go through life, this happens. But outside everything happening, if you know this simple mental trick that I teach athletes and I teach rock stars, you instantly go back up and you perform at your best. And at a certain point, life just becomes really magical. Life just becomes good. So here are the six things, okay? 
Now, we won't have time to cover all. I'm gonna give you a big picture, but you can find this on YouTube. If you Google six phase meditation on YouTube, you'll find it, and my team will give you access to this in, a, in the Mind Valley app. The first one is the feeling of being loved and loving others. It's called compassion and kindness. It's the feeling that you are connected to other humans. The second one is gratitude and happiness. It is your happiness state with where you are today. No matter if you're rich or you're poor, it's your happiness state with whatever you have today. The third is peace. Peace comes from forgiveness. It means that you are at peace and there's no one in the world who is, in a way, constantly on your mind because they are hurting you or they are abusing you. But peace also means that you're at peace with yourself. You are not angry at yourself. You do not have deep regrets. We'll talk about this later. Now, these first three phases all have to do with your present state, how you feel about life today. The next three have to do with the future state, which is how you feel about your future. You must have vote. So the next three are having a vision for your future. We look at three-year goals. And then self-determination, which means we think about how you want your day today to unfold. And the final one is feeling supported, which means you feel supported by, by not just the people around you, but by God or whatever you believe in, okay, what, whatever you believe in. These six phases, if you can generate them within your being, you become a truly powerful human being. So we're going to talk about how to generate these states. And I'm going to teach you science and spirituality. And I'm going to show you why these states matter. We won't have time to go through all six, but I'm going to teach you a few, and you can decide which are the ones you want to play with, okay? So first, let's talk about the first one, compassion. Now, this one is actually more important for adults than kids. Adults tend to be grumpier. Adults tend to sometimes have horrible jobs, and this takes away their sense of compassion, which means, you know, like I'm sure you've seen, um, how many of you here have met grumpy adults, right? or people who might be rude with each other or so on. Now, compassion is actually a function from your, your heart. It's, it's like an energy from your heart. But if you can train that energy, you become a nicer person. Now, you may be wondering, is there an advantage to being a nicer person? Well, it turns out that for a long time, human beings thought that if you, if you are the strong person, the person who can cheat, the person who can manipulate, you become successful. I'm sure you've heard of this concept called Machiave Ma Machiavelli, the famous Italian guy who could manipulate all of these people and became like a super rich man in Italy in the 14th century. That doesn't apply in today's world. If we look at the signs today, the kindest people are the ones who are doing most well. There was a study done in companies. So many of you I suppose at one point, want to get a job, right? Raise your hand if you want to get a job. Okay, great. Now raise your hand if you want to be on unemployment. Awesome. Okay, hey, everybody chooses their own life. So it turns out that if you are working for a company, if you are in the top 25% of the kindest people in the company rated by your peers, you are also 40% more likely to see your salary go up in the next two years. Simple study by Harvard. Kindness is a competitive advantage. So how do you generate kindness? Well, there's a simple hack, and this is how we start the six-phase meditation approach. So a lot of people think meditation is you sit down, you close your eyes, you put your fingers in some weird way, and you focus on your breath, or you clear your thoughts. That's one way, but that's not the way I like. I like a practical way rooted in science that can give you an advantage. The six-phase is that practical way but it starts with this simple process to activate the heart. So this is what science says. If you do this particular exercise, you generate so much kindness in yourself. Not only are you kinder to yourself, but you're kinder to the people around you. And when you go through the world, something interesting happens. You start attracting other kinder people. When you are kind, other people are kind to you. But even if someone is unkind, you don't get irritated. If someone is unkind to you, maybe a waiter is rude, or an Uber driver is rude, or there's a, a, a bully in school, rather than get upset about it, you actually look at them, and you start wondering, hmm, I wonder if they are okay, but it doesn't bug you. 
How many of you have been in that situation where you feel so strong that when someone else tries to hurt you, you just look at them and you're, you're, not, you're not afraid, you're not upset, you just go, hmm, I wonder what their parents did to them that made them be so rude. I hope they are okay. Have you ever been there? That's a very powerful way to be, right? So here's how you do it. It turns out you can control this state. So there was a study done, and they said that if you close your eyes, I want you to close your eyes right now. So we're going to do this right now. Close your eyes and think about the person you most love. For many of you, it might be your brother or sister, your mom or your dad, maybe your girlfriend or boyfriend. It doesn't matter. It could even be your dog or your cat. I want you to see in front of you the face of the person you love. Now imagine your love for them. Now imagine that you can feel that love in your heart area. Now give that love a color. Is it blue? Is it pink? Is it white? Now take a deep breath. And as you exhale, expand that love and imagine the love is now covering your entire body. Now take another deep breath. Now as you exhale, expand that love to fill this entire room. Now take another deep breath. Now as you exhale, expand that love to fill the entire city of Tallinn. Imagine like you're looking at Tallinn from a map, but it's covered in the light of this love. Feel this love like to everyone, the person you buy bread from, the cafe maybe where you sometimes work, your teacher, your school. Take a deep breath. And as you expand, as you exhale, expand this love to fill the entire country that you're from. Maybe it's Ukraine or maybe it's Estonia. Take a deep breath. And now as you exhale, expand it to fill the entire world. See the entire world, all people, all cultures, all plants, all animals. See the world like you're looking at the planet and see it lit up in the color of this love. Now open your eyes. Now, let's have a mic runner. Now, did you get that feeling? Somebody tell me, how did you feel with that? Whole body chills. You what? Whole body chills. Whole body chills. What else? Yeah. Warmed. Okay, what else? At peace. Okay, now, what you guys just learned is meditation. That is meditation. It's not covering, it's not like, just like chanting, Om. It's not, it's not focusing on your breath. It's radiating love. That is how you get into the right state. Now, on top of that, so that's phase one. On top of that, you do phase two, you do phase three, you do phase four, all the way to phase six. And as you get to phase six, you're at a completely different level. But the first step you did, you radiated love to the world. As you go forth in the world, you will find that the world will appear more loving to you. Whether this is science or metaphysics, we don't know. But when you do this, you become so much nicer to other people, and other people will reflect that back to you. But that's phase one. Now let's go to phase two. Now phase two is really interesting. It's on bliss. Bliss means happiness. And the way we do it is through a concept called gratitude. We now want to elevate. We've increased our level of love. Now we want to increase our level of happiness. Now science says that this practice, gratitude, which is simply being grateful for the stuff that happened before, is the human characteristic most associated with overall well-being. And we'll talk about some of the signs, but I want to show you something really crazy. How many of you understand that the words you tell yourself will influence your body? How many of you understand that? Okay. I want to show you something that you can try at home. So this is an experiment we did in our office at Mind Valley, we took three seeds, and you can do the same experiment. We put it in these bowls, X, Y, and Z. Okay, so in every seed, on, day, on every bowl, in day one, they are like these two seeds. Now, for the first bowl, X, we just said good words to the seeds. We said, you are going to be such a beautiful plant. You're going to grow up, and you're going to be so tall, and you're going to be so green, and you're going to be so, so, so beautiful and reaching out for the sun and we love you and we think you are amazing and we are so excited to see how you're going to grow to be such a beautiful plant. Why? We just ignore it. We just walk by it. Z, we would insult it. How do you insult a plant? Somebody toss out an insult for a plant. 
You'll grow upside down, you stupid green idiot. Nobody loves you. I don't care if a caterpillar eats you. I hope you die early, like really mean stuff, right? Now look at what happens after day 10. The one that's getting the compliments grows the biggest. The one that is ignored is in between. The one that's Z, we actually told it, I hope you grow upside down. It's literally upside down. Those, that, that was one of the insults that my team used on it. So if your words are influencing plants, what do you think your words are doing to your own body, to your own mind? And this is why gratitude matters. Now, I strongly encourage you to try this experiment. In some schools in America, they are doing this experiment to teach kids why we should never bully. Because we, you know, bullies, bullies do it sometimes because there's a part of them that needs to prove but they're actually negatively affecting the other person and themselves. If your words can affect leaves, imagine what it's doing to your skin, to your brain, to your eyesight, to the way you show up in the world. So there are so many studies on gratitude. All of this is science. It gives you more energy. You actually play better sports if you practice gratitude. You have higher emotional intelligence, which means you are more aware. You kind of more know what people are thinking. You are more forgiving, less depression, less anxiousness. You feel more connected to your friends. You sleep better, and your headaches start disappearing. So how do you do gratitude? Really simple. In the morning, after you do the compassion, remember the compassion, expanding your heart? You think about three things that you love about your personal life. Your personal life is family, friends, home, your pet, your dog. It doesn't have to be something big. It could be the fact that you have the most beautiful dog who licks you on the face every morning as you're getting ready. It could be the fact that your mom wakes up early to cook you a good breakfast. It could be the fact that you have an incredible friend who gives you the best hugs when he or she sees you in school. But then the second thing you do is you think about your work. Now, of course, most of you are in school, so your work is your, your school. You think about Something Now, I don't know your situation. When I was young, I went to a horrible school because my parents didn't have the money to send me to a good school. So I went to a horrible school. My teachers beat me. But there were still like little things that if I think back, I could remember. I had some good friends there. My PE teacher who taught me sports was great. There was this beautiful banyan tree that we could sit under in the shade. Even if you're in a horrible school, you can still think of little things that you can be grateful for. And the final thing is yourself. What are you grateful for for yourself? Maybe you have great hair. Maybe you play the guitar incredibly well. Maybe you're a good runner. Maybe you are always the kind person. So you think about these three things. Now studies show that simply thinking about these three things, so we call it three by three, three things in your personal, three things about school and your, or your work, three things about yourself. Studies show that if you do that, your level of happiness goes up. But here's the crazy thing. It goes up and it stays at an up level for almost 30 days. You won't just make yourself happier today. You'll be slightly happier tomorrow, even towards the end of the month. Gratitude has a really interesting effect on you. So let's try this. Close your eyes and just think about, let's start with personal life. Think about something three things actually that you love about your personal life. And as you think about it, I want you to just smile, just smile inside yourself. Your mom, your parents, maybe a pet, friendship, maybe a holiday you took, something about the house you live in. Now very quickly, let's move to your work on your school. Maybe a particular teacher who's good to you. The friendships that you make. Maybe a topic that you are learning that you truly love. Think about the people in countries, the kids in countries who do not get what you are experiencing. People in poorer countries. Reflect on how much gratitude you have for being in a place like Estonia. Now think about yourself. What do you love about yourself? It's okay just to, to, to say, hey, I love, I love my hair. I love my strong, powerful legs. I love my sense of style. 
I love my confidence. Okay, now open your eyes. Great, now you got to level two meditation. Level one, you remember what it was? Compassion, right? The heart exercise. That's actually been proven by science at a place called the HeartMath Institute to increase your levels of well-being. Now you layer on gratitude. Now, are you guys ready for level three? Okay, so level three is actually forgiveness. Now, this is a tough one. It's particularly, it takes a little bit harder to teach to kids. We are going to skip this one. If you find the six phase on YouTube or if you take the course, we'll go deeper into forgiveness. Forgiveness actually means to forgive people who have hurt you in the past, but also to forgive yourself. Now, forgiving someone who hurts you doesn't mean that what they did is correct, right? The fact of the matter is many people go through abuse. Many people have around the world may have parents who are cruel to them. Forgiving them doesn't mean that you that what they did is okay. It's a little bit more intricate. It means that you might still report them, you might move away from them, but in your heart, you understand that they are a broken human being and you know it's not you, okay? But forgiveness is a deeper chapter. We will go into it online. So we'll skip forgiveness for now and we'll go into phase four. Now, if you do the meditation and you skip forgiveness, it's perfectly okay. You can go straight to phase four. You have created levels of compassion, and now you've created levels of gratitude. This is the perfect state to get to phase four, and it is phase four that is the most fun for many young people. It is phase four that that tennis player, Bianca Andreescu, used to win the U.S. Open. Now, phase four is where you visualize your goals. So what is a good goal, right? Well, the most important thing I think I can give to any of you guys as, is to think about who you want to be three years out and visualize that. Make those pictures as clear as possible. Bianca Andrescu at 16 saw that at 19, she wanted to be the world winner for the US Open and beat Serena Williams. Now, a good goal is something that should scare you a little and excite you a lot. So think of yourself three years out and it should make you slightly scared. Oh my God, can I really do that? If it doesn't make you slightly scared, you're thinking too small. But it should also excite you. Yes, I really want that. Can you guys all think of something three years out? Just reflect in your mind. Would anybody like to share a three-year goal? Yes, just shout it out. She wants to be an exchange student in France. Amazing goal. What else? Yes. Incredible. He wants to achieve financial freedom in three years. That's a beautiful goal to have. Yes. Someone said it here. Scream it out. She wants to work for Mind Valley Marketing. Awesome. Scream it out. Even better. Nice. Okay. Hello. Uh, I want to get a chance to perform at the National Theater in Br uh, Great Britain. Amazing. Beautiful yeah. goal. Uh, that you. used to be my, one of my goals when I was 15. I wanted to perform in theater. What else? Anyone else? Oh, yes. Here, here. Mike Runners, okay. let's move a little faster. Oh, here, here, here. Okay. I want to be a yoga teacher in Spain. Amazing. A yoga teacher in Spain. Yes. To create a big community of hundreds and of thousands of people who are into personal growth in such a way that they can create deep connections with each other. Amazing. Beautiful goal. Now, here's what you want to do with your goal. And this is something we, we were just teaching this to the teenagers at Mind Valley University. You want to take those goals the yoga teacher. Find magazines that show Spain, that show an incredible successful yoga teacher teaching maybe classes of 100. Start sticking it on a board. This is called a vision board. This is what, this is, this is my vision board from 15 years ago, okay? Um, you wanna perform on stage, cut out pictures of stage, put yourself in that picture, stick it on that vision board. What you have your mind focus on is more likely to come to you. So, we don't know why this works, but vision boards create a lot of incredible opportunity for us. They keep us focused on our goals. People don't know if this is spiritual or it's just a mind. Maybe it's that thing called the law of attraction. Maybe we are manifesting it. 
Maybe it is something called the RAS. Have you guys heard of the RAS? It's a part of your brain called the reticular activating system. And we evolved from, you know, probably 20,000 years ago, before there were cities, human beings had to hunt for food. So they would have a goal in their mind, deer or meat or berry. And the mind had to, with that goal, get to the deer, get to the berry. That's the RAS. It's like a, it's a targeting system. And so it could be that it's nothing magical, but by having a vision board, by having these goals, our brains are better looking for opportunity. You might better see opportunities to create community. You might start stumbling upon books on community. The person who said yoga teacher might better see opportunities to learn yoga because the brain has been given that goal. Whatever it is, whatever you believe, it doesn't matter. I believe a little bit of the spiritual part. My son who's 14, he's only science, so he believes only in the science part. It doesn't matter. Either way, it works. Your mind responds to the pictures you make and the words you tell yourself. Okay, so the, um, the teacher who was teaching vision boards, she put this together when she was 19 years old, and she put down work at Mind Valley, and she didn't even know that Mind Valley was in Estonia, and she ended up getting a, um, a role teaching here at Mind Valley University. Here are other examples of vision boards that you can find on the internet. Okay, so here's a simple framework. This comes from... Um, one of the vision board teachers who was teaching here earlier. This is a vision board for teenagers. This is how you might want to create your vision board. These are nine areas that someone who is a teenager, might, it might matter to you. This is from Elisa Grabovaya. Okay, so you might, you might have a vision for the right partner you want to attract, girlfriend or boyfriend, peace of mind. This is how you feel on a daily basis, friendship, the type of friends you want, and how you want to spend time with your friends. There's family, how you want to spend time with your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your pets. Health, how you want your body to feel. Hobbies, which could be theater, it could be musical instrument. There is personal growth. These are your daily practices. Maybe it's yoga, maybe it's running. There is sports, and then there's education and school, your grades. So the mistake that many people make is because school is such a dominant part of our life, we tend to get overly obsessed with goals on grades, but we forget to set goals for how we want to show up as a family. We forget to set goals for the type of partner we want. That's so important in life. We forget to set goals for the friendships that we want. And this is the broken thing about our education system. When I went to school, I was told only your grades matter. Sports are secondary. I was never told to set goals for how to feel about myself on a daily basis. And so I grew up with no self-confidence. I thought I was, I was, um, uh, I had very bad skin as a teenager and I thought, you know, I'm, I'm ugly. I didn't have friends, but I did really well in school, but I missed out on so much because my goals were so singular. And that's why as a teen, you want to look at these nine areas, nine areas and can you guess which is the most important? Friendship. Personal growth, friendships, what is the most important? Nothing. None of them is more important. <laughs> if your teacher says your grades are the only important thing, not your head, but then ignore that advice. It's stupid advice. All of these are equally important. If not, you are going to be out of balance. Do you know what is the... The, the thing that you should fear most in life as you become an adult? What do you think is that thing that hurts so many adults? Regret is one. It's a, it's a good statement. The worst thing that's going to happen to you in life if you are not careful is that one day at the age of 40, you're going to wake up in a job that you hate, wondering, why did I spend 20 years of my life to get this stupid job that I hate? And do you know something? 80, there was a study done on adults, 2 million adults, and they found that 83% of adults dislike their job. 83%. The study was done around 15 years ago. If you are not careful, 
if you do not understand the concept of a balanced life, if you fall into the bullshit that the school is going to tell you that it's only about your grades and it's all about becoming an engineer or all about becoming that thing that they tell you to become, you will be one of that 83% of adults. But if you learn right now to create balance in your life, that love is important. Your boyfriend, your girlfriend, that is important. Your friendships, that is important. Your family, that is important. Your hobbies are important. If you learn that, you will not become a broken, sad adult at 40. Do you guys hear me? Do you guys agree? All of these are equally important. So start a vision board. Okay, but now when you have a vision board, how do you bring this into your meditation practice? Well, there's a technique called the... the, the I'm trying to remember the name of the technique. You're going to see a giant TV screen in front of you, and it's called your mental screen. That's the name, your mental screen. Imagine a giant TV screen in front of you, and every day, first you do the compassion, then you do the gratitude. The next thing you're going to do is, on that TV screen, you're going to take something from your vision board, just throw it on that screen and visualize it. Maybe, maybe it is a family trip to Norway because you're really excited about that. Your mom and dad promised you we're gonna, they're going to fly to Norway, maybe ride a car. Maybe it's the grades that you want. Maybe it's a date that you're looking forward to, a beautiful walk in the park with this, this boy or girl that really interests you. Maybe it's the sporting event. You're just going to see it on this giant TV screen, and you're going to imagine like you're watching it like it's a YouTube video. And you have directed and cut that video. You can see the colors. You can hear the sounds. You can see the people around you. Let's try that now. Think about that one goal. And for one minute, I want you to just imagine there's a, the biggest TV screen in front of you. See that goal and live it. Imagine you're watching it. See the colors. Make the colors brighter. So that's a trick. You make the colors brighter. It reinforces it in your brain. Hear the sounds. What's happening? What do you hear? Are there smells involved? Sometimes if the goal involves a family dinner or travel, there are smells. What do you feel? If it's sports, if it's, if it's love, if it's being connected to someone, there might be the feeling of touch, the feeling of the game. Make the colors brighter. Make the screen bigger. Make it as real as possible. Imagine it's directed by Steven Spielberg. Make the visuals absolutely gorgeous. Now, the most important thing, and here's the trick, what do you feel inside you? Is it excitement? Is it anticipation? Is it joy? Feel that feeling inside you. Now open your eyes. Now, every time you do this, you make it more likely for you to reach your goal. And there are studies on this. There are so many studies on this concept. It's called creative visualization. There are so many studies on this. The, the evidence is mind-boggling. But did you guys get, get how it worked? So we'll talk about the studies in a moment. Okay? So remember, you see a giant TV screen. You put it on that TV screen. You bring in all your senses, sight, hearing, touch, Maybe sometimes there's taste. Maybe you're seeing yourself in a beautiful restaurant with someone you care about. There's the taste. But the most important one is what you're feeling inside. Now, what's the evidence? Well, they, they studied this and they found really interesting things happen. When you give this to your subconscious, your mind will get you towards the goal. The study they did was with a psychologist called Alan Richardson, and he was studying basketball players in Australia. So he divided them into three groups. Group one, they had to go to the basketball court and practice shooting hoops. Group two, they practiced in their mind. They literally sat down in meditation, and in their mind, they saw themselves shooting hoops. Group three did no practice. Now, at the end, Alan Richardson studied to see which group had the highest increase in their performance. Which group do you think it was? A, B, or C? The one practicing in the court, practicing in the mind, or no practice? Can anyone guess? Okay, so a lot of people said B, right? Because you think that's where I'm going to go. Actually, they found that the people practicing in the court improved by 25%. That was group A. The group that didn't practice didn't improve at all. 
but the group practicing in the mine improved by 24%, almost as real as on the court. Now, it turns out if you mix both, if you practice on the court and you practice in your mind, you do even better. And so that's what they found. So the lesson there is it doesn't mean that it's all in your mind. Let's say you're visualizing yourself on a beautiful trip. Your parents have promised you that they're gonna, we're going to go on a family holiday together. You're visualizing your mind in a beautiful trip. You don't just visualize it in your mind. You actually go and you put in the practice. The practice might be getting on Google, researching the itinerary, helping your mom and dad research to find the best plane tickets. You put in some effort. If there's a guy or girl that you want to bring into your life, you might see yourself with this ideal person. But you've got to take the step and ask them out. You've got to put in the practice as well. All the studies show that when you put the mental practice, the visualization, and then you, take, you put in physical action, that's when you have an advantage. So you can see yourself doing better in school, but you still study, right? That combination is what works best. But as you go deeper in this practice, you will also learn that you can use this to heal your body. So when I was 14 years old, I, um, I had bad skin. You see, what, what you believe about your body is going to be true about your body. So when I was 13 years old, I remember my first pimple emerged. And a well-meaning aunt, I, I asked my aunt, what do I do about this? And she goes, oh, don't worry. You're a teenager now. You're going to get so many of these. And all of a sudden, for the next five years of my life, I had the worst skin. And I felt ugly. I never asked a girl out, even though I liked someone, because I just felt no one would date me. In school, the other kids called me pimple face, and they would laugh about it. Like I would have weird, horrible breakouts, disgusting to look at, and the other kids would mock me about that. When I was 17 years old, I started learning about creative visualization. And I read an interesting study, and it said that whatever you visualize in your mind will also influence your body. And the part of the body that is easiest to influence with the mind is the skin. A hypnotist can hypnotize you to believe that you are lying out on the sun and your skin will tan. And then that same book gave a simple visualization protocol to visualize to heal your skin. And so I started doing that. I had pimples for five years. In five weeks, my skin completely healed. Five weeks. And I had to do it three minutes, three times a day, so nine, time, nine minutes a day for five weeks. Very, very, very simple. In five weeks, I completely healed my skin. It changed my confidence. It changed how I showed up in the world. If I hadn't done that, I wouldn't have been the man who would have the confidence to come on stage here. When that happened, that is when my fascination with the human mind emerged. And that's when I started going really deep into studies of the mind because no doctor could do that for me. So keep this in your mind. What you're doing with this visualization here can also apply not just to the goals. It can make you better at sports. It can make you more confident. If you see yourself as confident, you become more confident. But you can also use it to, if you have pimples, you can use it to heal your pimples. You see yourself with better skin. If you want to learn about this, you can go to YouTube, and I've created a video for you guys. It's called Creative Visualization. Just type in Creative Visualization Vision, and I'll go deeper in the video. And if you want to learn how to use it to heal your skin, super simple, type in Creative Visualization for Healing Vision, and you will learn the technique. It's free on YouTube that I used when I was 17 years old to heal my skin, okay? So this is a really powerful tool. But now we have done phase one, phase two. We skipped the forgiveness part. Don't worry about that. We went to phase four, and now we go to phase five. After you see your life three years out, it's important to command how your day is to improve. So now in phase five, this is what you do. You do a practice called segment intending. And basically, you divide your day into beautiful different pieces, and you just set an intention for every piece of your day to unfold perfectly. So you might see yourself waking up in the morning feeling incredibly refreshed. You might see yourself showing up to school, just being in a good mood, completely prepared, confident. You might see lunch going really well with your friends. Maybe it's a weekend. You might see yourself with your family, maybe on a hike. You might see yourself having the most incredible dinner. 
than maybe watching Netflix, than playing some computer games, having a great time, doing your homework on time, getting to bed. You decide how you want your day to improve. Every day when I wake up, I tell my day how it is going to go. And when you do this, you honestly feel so powerful about what's going on. You stop having lousy days. But here's the interesting thing. Whether it's manifesting or it's the brain, it doesn't matter. It works. So here's an example, okay? Remember, the brain will focus on what you tell it to focus on. So if you wake up in the morning and in your meditation, you say, today, I'm going to have the most amazing lunch with my friends. Now, you go to the restaurant, oh, sorry, and you say, and we're going to have an incredible conversation, we're going to connect, the food is going to be tasty, everything is going to be amazing, and we're going to get more connected. Now, let's say you actually go out to the restaurant. What you want to order, the waiter brings you the wrong thing. You order like a beef burger, you get a chicken burger, and it's, you don't have time to change it. Most people would get upset because most people are trained to just complain and moan and bitch about whatever goes wrong in their life, but not you. Because you've commanded how your day is going to go, your brain is more likely to go, oh, it's a chicken burger, that's okay. I still have, I bet it's going to be tasty because you commanded healthy food. You're still going to be focused on the wonderful conversation with the friend, the connection you have with the friend, the ambiance of the restaurant. You don't let that one little thing mess you up. But most people, they will let that one little thing mess them up because that's what they are trained for. And then they will tell themselves, oh God, this restaurant is so bad, my life really sucks. They always bring me the wrong order. But if you do this segment intending, you are commanding yourself to be so powerful that nothing can shake you. Your days become formidable. How many of you here know people like that? Right? People who are constantly complaining, oh, life is always like this. Like, why does my foot always hurt? Why do I always have headaches? Why are all of these restaurants in Thailand so sucky? Why are everyone so unfriendly? Whatever you believe about the world is going to become the world for you. Do not be that person. I'm asking you to think about that person, not to blame them, but so you have a contrast and you know what adult you should never grow up to be. Whatever you believe about how your day is going to go will be true for you. If you're the person who believes that your day is going to suck, it's going to be cold again, your back is going to hurt again, people are going to ignore you again, that's going to be true. So by segment intending, you are putting yourself in this powerful position of power. And now we come to the final phase, which is really simple, the blessing. This is where whatever religious tradition you have, whether you, we are Jewish or you're Christian, uh, or maybe you don't have a religion, right? In Estonia, we have the highest rate of atheism in the world, um, I believe 82%. Maybe you don't have a religion. What you're doing over here is you're simply asking for whatever higher power you believe in to bless you and make sure that you are supported. So phase one, you give compassion to the world. Phase two, you express thanks and gratitude. Phase three, forgiveness. Phase four, you saw your life three years ahead. Phase five, you commanded how your day is going to go. And phase six, you basically say, this is who I am, this is what, I'm, what I seek to do, give me your support. Now, in Estonia, we have a lot of um, atheists, so many of you, like in my family, we're also more or less atheists, but we still believe in the spirit of nature, right? Or angels or guides, that's okay too, whatever you believe in. And if you don't believe in any of that, just think of yourself as asking for a blessing from your own core inner strength, like who you are. This is whom I'm committing to be. And that's how you close the meditation. In my case, while I do not believe in religion, I believe in God and I see myself fist bumping God. We fist bump now because, you know, it's the pandemic era with COVID. And that's it. That's the six phase meditation. Now, if you can do this every single day, it takes only about 15 minutes, but I promise you, your days will start changing. And if you cannot do it every single day, do it on a Sunday. The effects will still stay with you for seven days, but if you do it every day, you're constantly up-leveling all of these different dimensions of your life, and your life is going to be amazing. You can find videos on this on YouTube, and you can get better at it if you also use it with other tools, like I shared the vision boarding tool. If you get a chance, do a vision board. It's a great way to get, you, get rid of like magazines that have been piling up in your home. So with that, I thank you for being really, really, really good students. I hope you guys enjoyed this session and 
I will um, um, wish you to have the most amazing day today at this event. Thank you all.